Well, howdy y'all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. With the new league starting in nine and a half hours and the Siege of the Atlas expansion as well, I thought I would just give some last second league start tips. So the first tip that I want to suggest is that you set realistic goals for yourself that will be fun to achieve. This is probably the single most important tip on this entire list. Don't aim for a Mage Blood, don't aim for a Mirror unless the process of acquiring it will be fun. It's not going to make up for a miserable experience of, you know, 300 hours grinding content you hate in order to get this item and then you realise, oh, what have I done with all of this time? No, you want to make sure that you're having fun on the way uh, to whatever your goals are, otherwise you will not enjoy the game. Secondly, if you are someone that's motivated by currency, day one is a pretty unique opportunity. The first day of a league presents a blank slate. There are no hand-me-down items, there are no once-loved second-hand items that are selling at bargain prices, and there are no items that are cheaper than usual because they didn't val well. This means that the small number of good items that drop for you are going to be worth much more on days one, two, three of the league than they will be later on in the league. And I present here a graph of the prices of Cold Iron Point, which is only a tier three rarity unique, but was one that was in very, very, very hot demand through the Scourge League. So you can see that it pushed from 100 chaos to 149 and then sort of trailed down over time. But then its long-term stable point was around 10 chaos later into the league. So early on, getting a cold iron point was much more exciting and much more valuable than it would be later on in the league. This doesn't necessarily apply to every single unique, but it does apply to most of them. And it does apply when you take the entire package of uniques that a player loots through normal play and just treat them as one sort of basket and just work out what the average values are. Secondly, though, there's a couple items that buck this trend, ultra late game consumables. Here I'm going to talk about the Tailoring Orb, the Tempering Orb, the Mirror of Calandra, and to a lesser extent the Maven's Orb, which is being sort of reworked and replaced with the Orbs of Dominance and the Orbs of Conquest. These are items that players do sometimes loot quite early in progression, like day one, day two, day three. There'll be a small number of them flying around. Uh, people take them because they know, oh yeah, this is going to be super valuable but there's not any short-term demand for them, and that keeps the prices pretty low early on. So this is going to happen for a whole bunch of items that are too precious to use at league start. They will start out really cheap, and they will just rise in price over time. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that if your goal is to mostly farm loot yourself and then trade it towards a large amount of wealth in league, like mirrors or something like that, then you can leverage this gap by looting and personally looting and selling the items that collapse in price fast, then convert that wealth into something that goes up in price over the course of the league, like tempering orbs, like tailoring orbs, or mirror pieces if you're less rich. Now the cat is out of the bag a bit on mirror pieces. It used to be that I would say to people, don't buy exalts early on, buy seven years bad luck divination cards, buy mirror shards. It's no longer quite the winner that it used to be because a lot more people have started doing that, but you will find plenty of items that are just simply too precious to use on day one, day two, and really even day seven, but that people, once people start getting genuinely rich in League and are looking to perfect items, they will want. So to give an example of this, on day three of Scourge, 45 cold iron points were equal to one Mirror of Calandra. On day 80 of Scourge, this ratio was 7,300 to one, and that should give you a bit of a sense as to how much this affects over the course of a League. Related to this, you can also decide, instead of trying to personally loot things yourself to take advantage of the blank slate economy, you can craft items early for meta builds and do it on a mass production basis. Now, often you don't want to be the person that's making the most obvious item. So for a meta build like Toxic Rain, the plus two to the level of socketed bow skills and plus one to the level of all socketed skills, a bow is a very obvious piece of that puzzle. Sometimes you want to be the person making the obvious item, but sometimes that is an overfished market and you actually want to be the person that is making the rings for that build or something like along those lines. That's going to be something you'll have to research yourself. It's especially worthwhile to pay attention if you know a very efficient way to make something that is good enough to attract the attention of a lot of people that are playing this build. So for example, on lower item level bows, this is 64 through 82 inclusive, you can apply a corroded and metallic fossil to it at once, so in a two socket resonator, and this craft will have a 25-ish percent chance of giving you both the plus two bow skills and plus one to all skills. This is a really solid starter bow. If you can pick up a five link bow or a six link bow cheap and then apply that craft to it, that's the sort of thing that you can on sell to someone that is playing a Toxic Rain champion because it will be a big upgrade for them and plenty of Toxic Rain players will just happen to get lucky and loot an Exalted Orb in Act 7. Third tip, identify rare amulets. 
This is something that has not been the case in Path of Exile before 3.17. Now, there's going to be a minimum item level here and we don't yet know it. We're not going to know it until the patch actually goes live. At that point, all of the information on the newly added itemization pool for amulets will be updated and we will be able to, or will be data mined and it will be known. And we will be able to tell what the minimum levels are for plus one to the level of all intelligence spell skill gems, plus one to the level of all chaos spell skill gems, and plus one to the level of all spell skill gems. All of those types of mods, they'll all be able to be rolled on every amulet that drops. If an amulet is a terrible base type, like a gold amulet, uh, then do still pick it up and identify it, because if you do hit two of these uh, mods on it, it's going to be a massive hit anyway. And if you hit one, it might just be in a situation where you could bench craft it and then use a Jorgen Talisman craft on it and replace that amulet with something better. Uh, you definitely want to list plus one to one category of skills with OK other mods for an exalt early on and see if they sell. Uh, and this is going to be a major incentive to get to the level of content that is dropping these rare amulets and just start blitzing that content as quickly as you can at the start of the league. Uh, the fourth tip is to uh, do the content that other people are, do not seem to be doing, as long as it's fun. So in a world where the Atlas is shining in you and everyone seems to be rolling a boss killing character, maybe you want to be the heister, maybe you want to be the simulacrum farmer, maybe you want to be the delver. All of these will be areas of the game that might well be overlooked because so much is shiny and new about the Atlas. Obviously, you need to find the right balance between having fun and running this content. Uh, and I would highly recommend that if there is a piece of off Atlas content that you particularly like and that you can find a way to make profitable, then this is going to be a very lucrative time to do it. Especially if, like me, you're someone that likes heist. Uh, tip five is for leveling. And this is to list major item level thresholds and have this in your mind while you're leveling. So this can help you work out when you need an upgrade and these ones are for my needs. Yours might be different. So just write yourself a list before the servers go up. Uh, this will be really useful for you. So for all characters, movement speed, 10% item level one, 15% item level 15, 20% item level 30, 25% 40, 30% 55. This is gonna to apply to every character. Flat damage to spells for wands. Uh, the tiers for this are levels 1, 11, 18, 26, 33, 42, 51, 62, and 74. And then I'm expecting that I'm going to have troubles with flat stats and single resist while I'm leveling, so I want to have, pay attention to where those come up, and also to all resist rolls. And you can see that I've got those all written down here. These are the numbers that I'm expecting to need while I'm leveling. And so if I find myself in a situation where I'm unable to level all of my intelligence gems, and I'm in level. I'm killing level 53 monsters, maybe it would be appropriate for me to say, all right, I'm just going to hold out for two more levels, and then at 55, maybe I'll find a ring that's got the intelligence I need, as well as other stats that are workable on it, and that will be a big buff for me. Sixth, but mostly, be fast. The rewards for the 282nd Shaper kill are going to be far better than those for the 92,177th kill, and that's because the unique item market won't be flooded yet. It's too late to practice leveling, but it is not too late to write up a few notes. Have all of the information handy on where you're going to get your various gems, uh, which acts they're in, and also what your sort of plans are for when your big power boosts are when you're leveling. So for instance, I'm aware in the back of my mind, when I hit level 20, there is a huge power boost to be had by using the Spellcaster Wand recipe. Uh, that may not apply to your character, you might be playing something quite different, in which case you don't benefit from that, but there will be other things that you can use to get a considerable speed boost. You want to minimize the research that you're doing that uh, at league start. You don't want to be spending time alt-tabbed out into third-party resources like PoEDB. Yeah, you're going to need to do a little bit of that, but the less of that that you can do on the fly, the better. And that's all i got on this. May your Valovs have interesting results, and I hope you enjoy your league start.